My name is Carly Gerlach. I am the Employer Relations Specialist here at McEwen University. I graduated from the University of Alberta with a Bachelor of Arts Pol Political Science degree with a minor in Economics. I was interested in traveling and gaining as many language skills as possible, so upon my graduation I uh, moved to Spain and I decided to teach English there. I moved without a job <laughs> or even a hotel booked and uh, lived and worked there for a year and then after that I moved to South Korea where I also sp uh, taught English as a second language and um, following that I moved on to Amsterdam, the Netherlands. So. Uh, I moved to Holland in 2007, lived there and wor worked there for an international global marketing and business analysis company for about four years before moving back to Edmonton, and that's where I am today. After uh, graduation, I had studied Spanish while I was in school. Um, in university, I have Spanish heritage, never learned how to speak it though, so I decided that um, to aid my political career, which I was intending to do, uh, I would go and, and learn and be immersed in the Spanish culture and learn the language there. After living in Spain, I decided to move to South Korea to uh, teach English once again. It was a great way of getting exposure to the Asian culture and uh, I really wanted to ensure that I had that on my resume um, since I was really interested in working in um, different multicultural type environments. And upon um, that, the year that I spent in uh, Korea, I then decided to move to the Netherlands and um, the Netherlands was, the reason that I chose the Netherlands was because they had a great, um, late, like the market was booming, so the job market was really strong at that time. It was in 2007. Uh, so it seemed to be in a great place in Europe, in Northern Europe, to, to go. Um, the majority of D Dutch people seemed to speak English, and also uh, my partner is Dutch, so the, for him it was like going home, and for me it was going to someplace new. With Spain, I admit that there wasn't maybe as much forethought going into that other than the fact that it was a warm climate and it was by the beach. So um, I won't talk necessarily about Spain. And then in Korea, it was a bit more straightforward. So there are many agencies that can assist you with teaching abroad. Um, so I'll focus on my experience in Amsterdam and finding uh, and applying to work there. Uh, when researching, I had um, looked into international head, large global companies first of all, and found out that they were headquartered majority in Amst uh, in Amsterdam. So I researched. Uh, I kind of pinpointed the specific industries and and companies that I was interested in, and then I applied directly. Um, sent my resume. I I. Um, also was quite interested in working for Greenpeace at the time, so I just reached out to them, really just kind of, not cold called, but really just kind of profiled myself through um, re like emails and sending my resume ahead, and actually had really good response. Um, the majority of Dutch people, like I said, they speak English, so my application seemed um, to be to be well accepted, and it's the research aspect was, was great, actually, in, in the end, it seemed to be that there Quite a few opportunities there. With Spain, I didn't have as much culture shock. I had been there before um, traveling, so I hadn't. I kind of knew what to expect. Um, with Korea, I definitely experienced culture shock. I hadn't been there before. I hadn't been to any a Asian countries prior to that, and just literally to arrive and be, you know, inundated by by all the people and the the language barriers and and really just kind of everything um, I had to remind myself constantly like I chose to come here <laughs> I'm happy to be here because it was quite challenging to, to go to the bank and to um, open an, like a, an account or to, to even go and um, buy laundry detergent <laughs> I found out I was washing my clothes in fabric softener for the whole year I was there <laughs> um, after so those simple things that you take for granted here I feel like is something that um, was kind of I had to get used to living there but once I found my stride it was really exciting and quite quite fun
well, first of all, in Spain is very, you know, you can, we can wait till tomorrow. There's an expression that just says tomorrow, like mm -hmm. in Spanish, and you could be waiting for things to get done uh, for, for days. And um, there's not much organization, whereas in Korea, things are very structured. You um, definitely have to, there's, there are def definite um, kind of norms or ways of kind of dealing with people, uh, especially your manager or ways of showing respect. And so definitely when it comes to um, work hours, you would definitely not leave your office before your manager, for example, and the ways of greeting each other and, um, to, and uh, how you address someone who's more senior than you is, is different. So you have to be really aware of all of those kinds of um, little cultural differences. In Holland and in Amsterdam, uh, particularly, it was the work environment was kind of quite similar to here. Although I think they're really straightforward people in general. The Dutch people are very they they express exactly what they mean. So there's no mincing words. And so if you do well in that kind of environment, if you uh, work while receiving kind of feedback in a direct manner, then I think that it's it's quite fine. But you'll have to get used to it at the beginning. I would say that it's quite easy, like it's easier than oftentimes than I think we think. I think it's just more about pinpointing, first of all, your country that you're interested in, the languages that, that maybe you speak, and first of all, how you'll get your visa. Um, I got a working holiday visa in for Holland, so it was quite easy um, to then seek work at multiple different companies and apply easily. Um, but if had I not had that, then it would have been more challenging. So make sure you do your research and find out what types of um, requirements that you need to work uh, and how long it will take as well. So if you if it will be a lead time of a few months, can you do you have money to support yourself in that time? Um, the application process, like it seems like there are quite a few agencies that can assist with that depending on what countries that you're in. So always um, research third party recruitment companies. Um, for anybody who speaks English as your first language, it seems that there's always positions available. Uh, I was shocked actually at the opportunities in Amsterdam in particular. I had, I think, um, job offers with Canon International, Boeing International, um, and Greenpeace and there was a few uh, options that I had and I was actually surprised that I had that many um, job offers to choose from and that was only after two weeks of actually actively searching and again know the job market that you're going into though because that was um, five years ago now so it was booming as opposed to now where you would be kind of more hard-pressed I think to find positions that in your field in particular so just research and know what you're in for uh, ahead of time. I would recommend um, any country that you're planning on going to, there's always a number of expat websites, so in particular in Amsterdam, um, expatica.com is one. Uh, there's also Undutchables, which is again like it's a, a site where you can go for not only job opportunities but also just kind of supportive living in the Netherlands. Um, lots of companies that help you find housing as well if you if you want. and uh, and Definitely third-party recruiters. I I went to one called Unique Multilingual Solutions, and they were they were great. They had recruiters that could find jobs based on your language skills, but then also lots of native English speaker um, jobs that they could present. Um, so there lot there's lots there are lots of uh, different I guess forums out there for for expats abroad. So just search that and particularly particularly your country that you're interested in and I think you'll find quite a few options. So I wish I would have known maybe the um, how important it is to, to meet people right away and kind of create a support network for yourself. Like I think that people see it as being glamorous to work abroad and to travel and and it is exciting when you can do it of course but it's also you, you, it takes some getting used to the fact that you're in a new city and new place you have to set up your life from scratch you don't have the support networks and it's sometimes hard to connect to people back home because of course they see you as going off on this great adventure but for you it's it's hard at the beginning when you're setting up so setting up a new life and and kind of uh, having a new start so just be patient it's okay if you feel homesick and just know that that feeling could come so that it's not a shock when you get there and also just to stick with it and and let it 
give yourself a good year to sink in and see if you if you do start to to like it and if you don't then you know then you can always look at other options i guess but don't pull the plug too soon <laughs>